Hello, I am Arnie from EcoCycle.ca and today we're going to be talking about power pack mounting options. It's great to see some power packs getting out there. So I want to show you guys some options for how you can mount the power pack in your project. So uh, basically the power pack bracket is a um, engine drive system that can be bolted into your project given the right structure is in place. And that structure includes either a 1x3 or a couple of 1x2. So I'm going to kind of walk you through the process of using either one of those to mount your bracket. And you can decide which option is best for you. So with that, let's get started. So the power pack is basically going to mount on the very bottom of your frame whatever you decide to produce. So it's gonna be right at the floor level, at the ground or at the bottom of the vehicle. And it's gonna be based off of this one by three by 24 inch long tube, rectangular tube. And um, you can mount the power pack in various different ways. You can cross bolt the power pack to a uh, one by four inch section. Like you can use a couple one by twos that are getting together like we did on the Go kart behind, behind us. Um, the one by three is only two walls to go through, and again, the power pack mounts on 12 inch centers. So you're going to come four inches from the back or from the front. This is the front of the tube, four inch, measure four inches, measure 16 inches, and measure 20 inches. And of course, your piece is 24 inches in total. So, uh, cross bolting, you're going to need these two. 4 inch and 16 inch holes. This is for your power pack. What I'm going to show you now is a tab mount using these one by ones. And you can see that the power pack has a couple of uh, weld tabs that are just bolted onto the slots. And uh, again, you put these on 12 inch centers. And even if you don't drill the first 4 and 16 inch holes on your one by three, you certainly should mark them all out so you know where four and 16 inches is from this end here or 12 inch on centers because that's uh that's basically the mounting foundation for your power pack bracket so so with that um we're gonna take this one by three and we're going to uh do a couple things to it we're gonna take this one by three which is again it needs to be at least six inches long because you need to have a hole drilled at five inches high if you're going to use the axle bracket uh, kit that I, I hope to supply to you and um, this can really be as long as you need it to be to for whatever kind of project you're creating so you need to think about all that so yeah so we're going to uh, start by welding this on so that it's nice and square at 90 degrees we're going to weld on these one by ones and we're going to make a nice solid uh, flat platform so that we can mount our power pack bracket tabs onto these one by ones and then I'll show you how to mount the axle brackets. Whoops. Okay, so there you have it. There's a, the 1x3x24, by by and it's sandwiched by a couple 1x1x18s, and we're leaving this 3-inch uh, width at the back section for the bearing carriers. And the reason is we're doing this is because we want to be able to... Uh, have a simple bracket for the spool for the IRS and anything wider than three inches is going to cause problems with the specific spool design that we're using so um, so yeah so you're gonna see how that all develops in the future here but uh, for tab mounting your power pack this is where to start so one by one by three by 24 one by one by 18 this needs to be at least a one by three by six and the, the height is up to you but you need to have measure off five inches from the base and put a hole at five inches here for your axle brackets. So let's now take the power pack and mount it on. Okay, so we've got the power pack back into the weld tabs and we're gonna use our uh, five and a half inch long bolts here and we're going to re-attach the power pack to the weld tabs. And where is my other five? Oh, it's in my hand. Okay. 
just get that all in and secure. You don't have to tighten anything up. And there you go. So you now have your power pack secured to your frame on weld tabs. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, install the axle brackets. And the axle brackets go on in a similar fashion. And a 3 8 bolt again is utilized. These guys are going to be around 4 inches long. Now the nice thing about these brackets is they will accept either a two bolt or a three bolt bearing. And all you're gonna really need to do here is just get these guys tightened down. So we are going to uh, tighten the brake brackets up now using a 916 wrench and socket. And there you go, that's all there is to it there. So the uh, bracket's already on, or the brake bracket. Now, what you're gonna be able to do, now that you've got this bracket installed, you can mount a three bolt bearing on here, or if you want, you can mount a two bolt bearing on here. You see, they both, uh, they both are accommodated. And now you're going to be able to take your drive axle and you're going to be able to run it through these bearings. Make sure there's no burrs or anything on any of these guys. There we go. Let's work it in. Don't tighten the bearings up until you get your axle in. And there you go. Now you've got an axle mounted to your power pack bracket okay so it's all built on this one subframe and that will give you lots of options for uh, making this work in your project so you will slide on your uh, brake disc this one here is designed for a 220 millimeter rotor it's a pretty common part that I've found on Amazon same with this caliper however I must caution you there are a couple iterations of this caliper, at least that I know of. One's kind of a left side, one's kind of a right side. I've only got a solution right now for a left side mounting. Basically, power packs that use a jack shaft will have the sprocket on the opposite side here. And uh, that also just will slide on nice and easy. Now, the advantages of having your axle kind of generally located is uh, once you get everything square, you're going to be able to put a couple bearing carriers onto the ends of the axle and you're going to be able to build your frame out to those bearing carriers. So uh, this, in essence, will kind of locate all your key components in your power powertrain assembly. So uh, with that, let's just uh, tighten things up to get everything kind of squared out and maybe we'll try one of these power pack units on here and see how she fits. Oh, there's another feature I forgot to mention, and that is the adjuster assembly. So with this uh, this uh, turnbuckle here, um, the power pack and this rear bracket has already been designed to accommodate this turnbuckle. And all you need to do is use the hardware, which includes a couple of 3 8 bolts, some nuts, and you basically will put the bolt through. You're going to use one of these 1.25 inch spacers. Put your turnbuckle through there. Use another 1.25 inch spacer. Whoops. Get it all together. Okay, so we're putting in the adjuster. 
And the adjuster consists of a couple 3 8 uh, heim joints, one with a reverse thread, so that when you turn the adjuster barrel, it uh, threads out both of those adjuster ends together, and that allows you to adjust your power pack tension. So as you can see, I'll zoom that out a little bit for you. But as you, whoop, too much. Okay, all right, so there you go. So here's your adjuster in action. So you can see how it takes all the adjustment into the power pack. So you can get perfect chain tension from your output, which is gonna be on this side if you use a jack shaft and your chain is gonna run right up alongside the power pack to your rear drive axle. Okay, thanks everybody. That was fun putting the power pack engine drive together with the solid rear axle and bearing carrier uh, disc brake plates. So uh, next time, I hope to show you what we can do to basically stylize this section as well as show you the IRS rear carrier assembly. So if you want to put independent suspension on your go-kart, I'm thinking about that too. This is going to use the KJ Racing center spool. And I've got all the parts for half a dozen of those. So I'm going to put one together and um, yeah, we're going to have the provision for IRS. So the uh, building blocks are being put in place. We're starting with the small block power pack and a basic live axle setup. We're gonna to graduate to the uh, IRS, and that IRS is gonna to transcend to the big block power pack, which is also in development. So we've got everything for that. We've already cut our first prototype, and uh, that's just kind of uh, all coming together in the mind's eye and uh, on the computer right now. So uh, I hope that we have that coming up for you in a little while too but uh, right now we're just trying to get this little small guy uh, small block power pack off the ground and a great choice for your projects that need seven horsepower to ten horsepower gas engines and a reversible centrifugal uh, variable transmission belt drive transmission so if uh, that appeals to you then check out ecocycle.ca it's a pleasure. I hope to do this more, and please subscribe and follow along, and uh, let's see what we can build together. See ya!